Welcome back to Paycheck Powerhouse, where each week I'm helping you unpack the mindset and strategies to break the paycheck to paycheck cycle and to live debt free. I'm your host, Paula. I'm excited to be here with you today. Today's video is about savings. How much savings is enough to be able to retire and know that we are set for a comfortable life? From what I'm reading online, a lot of us don't know what is enough and what we do have, how long is it going to last? That's exactly what I'm gonna show you today is how to calculate your target nest egg. I like to call it a nest egg, not retirement, even though it will be used probably in retirement years. I like to look at it as each of us has their own nest egg, or either it's individual or joint with your partner, but this is you controlling and managing your future. And so we need a target so we understand how far are we and you probably already started this account and you probably already have something in there so if you're curious the amount that you have right now how long is it going to last then you want to stick around and watch this video the first place you want to look for is your budget tracker if you don't have one yet then i'm going to link down below for you the one that i am using this is the one that i built for the paycheck to paycheck solution course and i'm going to share it with you down below an example of calculations these are of course fictional uh, for jane and for joe the starting point are the expenses you need to add up everything that is costing you money per month this is your comfortable minimum these are your bills your mortgage your food gas everything pretty much that is in the top section of expense category you're not going to add here eating out or shopping or entertainment so here we're going to add up all the utilities plus the food and gas and the total is 3620 i'm going to put here This is per month. So I'm gonna write here monthly. Perfect. Now we're going to take that monthly cost and multiply it by 12 because we have 12 months in a year. So we're gonna put yearly cost. $43,440, perfect. That's how much it will cost Jane and Joe for one year. Now, let's say that Jane and Joe already have some money saved up. Let's say that they're in their 40s and they have $250,000 saved. So we're gonna have here their wealth. Now what they want to know is how long is this $250,000 going to cover for? And the math is very simple. We're going to divide the $250,000 or whatever amount you have by the yearly cost. 5.7. This is really low. What this means is that Jane and Joe have enough money set aside in their nest egg to cover for five and a half years, roughly. Is this good or is it bad? Ideally, you want to be in the 25 range. So you want that division, the total amount divided by your yearly cost, you want that to give you 25. We're estimating to live around 25 years in our retirement age. Of course, it could be more. Now, if you're far off from that, don't panic, you have time. This is also a very good estimate to know what you're aiming for. If you're looking at your current cost, depending how old you are, you might of course have different needs and different expenses in your retirement year. You most likely will not have a mortgage, hopefully. So I would remove the mortgage from the current calculation. This is assuming that until you retire, you're going to fully pay off your mortgage and have no loan. However, you still need to consider your taxes, your property taxes, as well as any HOA fees, because those are still going to be continuous, as well as insurance, homeowners insurance. So you want to have all those three, take a look at how much they are now, and then just replace your mortgage with those numbers. 
In their case, here they are spending $2,000 on mortgage a month. Let's say that it's going to be just half. So now instead of the $3,620, we're going to remove a half of that, just a thousand. Okay, so that means that now the yearly cost went down to $31,440, which means that all of a sudden their wealth account is covering for almost eight years. That right there gave them two and a half years, which is good news. Next, let's take a look at a car. Now, do we really need a car in retirement? There's two things to look at. First, you will probably not be paying for a car payment. I really hope you won't. That's usually with new cars and when you're, you know, sort of in midlife. And there's also, secondly, the option of not owning a car altogether. These are things you should think about in retirement age because you could live in a city where you can just use public transportation, for example. So the area where you choose to live is uh, very important because that will determine your cost. So here it's a little bit tricky. Let's say if we remove both of these, then over here in my total, I'm going to also subtract the 800. So now we're down to 1820. What happened over here, my year, yearly cost now is 21,840 and my wealth account will now support 11.45 years. Huge improvement. We, are, we already doubled our outlook simply by recalculating more realistic expenses. Now, on the other hand, there are also added expenses that we don't have now, which are medical expenses. Let's put here health. Let's say another $400 a month. So now our yearly cost went up a little bit. We are now at 9.38 years. Now working backwards, I think it's very interesting to calculate how much you should be saving on a yearly basis based on what your nest egg will look like and based on what you already have in there. We're not even taking into consideration compound interest and the interest gained during the investment period. That's just a bonus. So being conservative, we are trying to save $26,640 throughout the year. So this, the quick calculation, this would be, let's say, monthly savings. By 12. We are looking to save $2,220 a month. This is how much Jane and Joe should be saving in order to meet their target of $26,640 a year. Now, if you're wondering how is that even possible because they're not making that much money, by cutting down costs and increasing their income. So eventually this mortgage will go away. So anything that was going towards the mortgage will now be shifted once it's paid towards savings. Also, Jane and Joe hopefully will have their income increase over time. It's just part of the natural process. If you don't have that increase year on year or every couple of years, then you might want to research that and see what are some of the steps you can do. Requalify yourself, gain some more knowledge, certificate, whatever it takes to get you that promotion so that right there is the calculation. You can of course do the same calculation for your own numbers based on your own costs and expenses, utilities, food, gas. Based on those numbers, take a look at your wealth account and do that division so you can see how many years of coverage do you have. If you don't have a wealth account yet, this is a good time to start. If you enjoyed this video, then you want to watch my next one where I talk about the retirement accounts and how to max out your contribution for the entire upcoming year. I'll see you there next.